uh, from Ryan Dorn, who is a uh, specialist, and today he's going to be talking about website revenue potential, and I definitely would um, definitely have big ears on this one because he specifically did help our company uh, grow our uh, our revenue on our website from zero to 5,000 in, in, in less than three months. So very excited to see what he has to say today as we're um, – I'll have them. So, Ryan, go ahead and take it from here, and uh, we're all ears. Thanks, everybody at uh, Shweki Media. Appreciate it very much. You guys having me, um, having me on the call today, and always um, thrilled to talk about you know what I'm passionate about, and that is uh, growing online revenue. And, and one of the questions that I get a lot uh, to the club is, you know, I have a website, I don't have a lot of traffic. What can I do to be able to uh, you know to get uh, make more money uh, from my website? So we're going to talk about Gosh, we're going to talk about a lot of things today. Um, but the, the questions and answers that you know that, that we have, you know, to this issue change each and every day. So we really need to, to spend a bunch of time, you know, keeping up with these things. What I would encourage all of you on the call today to do is, as we talk together today, um, you're going to have a lot of questions. I know that you are. And so, uh, rather than wait to the very end, what I'd love for you to do is lower right box of your screen. Uh, don't be afraid at any time. Uh, you know, throughout the uh, throughout the call, to punch in a, a question right, right there, and then uh, you know I'll do my best to to work that into the presentation. The reason I ask you to to go ahead and share or ask those questions, you know, while we're on the call together, is because when we get to the end, we may run out of time. The other the other thing is because each one of you is a publisher or a sales manager, the questions that you're asking it's very likely that they're very common uh, questions, and I don't want to wait to the end. If you've got a question about something we've covered, we're going to talk about some pretty complex things today. To help make you money, you know, ask ask away. So just type it in the lower right hand corner, and then uh, you know, then click um, uh, send, and we'll uh, we'll dissect as many of those and work as many as we can. All right. Now, when I begin working with publishers, and I'm very fortunate, uh, you know, my previous uh, post was with Morris Communications. Uh, you know, I were, oversaw the online operations for 11 or 12 different um, magazines, and then one really big website uh, called HorseCity.com. Collectively, you know, these uh, sites did, you know, just over a million dollars in online revenue. The first thing that we did, uh, and this is the first thing I do with all publishers that I work with, and I work with about, I guess, about 40 publishers right now on a weekly basis, is we do what we refer to as a mind map. And what publishers uh, to do, whether I'm in person or I'm on the phone, is we do this very elementary task. We actually take a piece of paper. And we actually write down, okay, you know, what is, uh, you know, what what is our magazine? We make a circle, you know, right, uh, you know, in the in the middle. And then what I do is that I want I want to begin to draw circles, you know, on the exterior, you know, of the you know of the piece of paper, because one of the things most publishers don't do is they don't ever take the time to sit down and identify unique opportunities that exist, and they don't know how to price those opportunities. And very rarely do they actually write out a map. And, and I like to do this on a big white piece of paper, you know, put it next to my desk, you know, and things like that, or next to my computer monitor and pay attention to it. So, I, you know, the first thing, and obviously, you know, the key thing is, is your print product. Um, I'm today, to tell you as the Internet guy, you know, that, that the, uh, the printed word, um, it, you know, is it, not going away. Uh, there's a certain experience that comes from the printed word and from a magazine uh, that people really, really like. And it's got a special place, uh, you know, to many people. Now the way that it's delivered one day may change, uh, perhaps not in you know in uh, to as grand a scale as some internet people may say, but I just want you to know that I'm a big uh, purveyor, if you will. I'm a big uh, proponent uh, of magazines and the printed word. I think the ultimate compliment, and I don't think the internet is necessarily going to replace you know magazines. So previously we wanted everything we do, we want to be able to use print as as our base. Now, some things that we're going to talk about today, research, a unique niche. Um, do you price research you know, for your customers? Do you make it a part of your advertising package? Is it something that you make available to your clients and your advertisers? Here's one thing to share with you. Over the course of this year, the magazines and publishing companies I've worked with, well, they did struggle. They didn't lose their tails. One of the reasons they did not lose their tails is because they did things like bundled research, when all things go wrong, a lot of times people have a little bit of money left over for research. They're trying to figure out ways to save their business and save other businesses. So we're going to talk a little bit about research today. We're going to talk about banners. And one of the key things I can tell you about banner ads is that despite what you hear on the mass media, banner ads on publishing company websites, whether it's newspapers or magazines, can work really, really well. And we're going to talk you know, some more about that. I'm 
calls today do have some type of e-newsletter. Um, because I don't know each of you personally and individually, although I look forward to getting to know you over the course of these webinars, I can't tell how many e-newsletters you send out on any given month. People successful typically will send as many as three total e-newsletters. And we'll talk about that at the top. Digital editions are a unique dinosaur, or a unique dinosaur, that's the wrong word, sorry, are a unique product in and of themselves. They're a unique monster, perhaps. <laughs> Digital editions can be very profitable if uh, you do things correctly, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. In relation to, to that, is special digital editions. I've seen more money made with special digital editions than almost anything else. Video, we're going to graze upon video a little bit today. Uh, we're going to talk a lot about directories, and then in some of our upcoming calls, we're going to talk more about mobile. Mobile is a great opportunity. Right now, it's just not something that a lot of us are paying a lot of attention to, but perhaps maybe uh, we should. All right, the first thing we want to talk about today is, is your web traffic. A lot of times, publishers will say to me, you know, Ryan, I don't have much web traffic. I, I'm here to tell you today to tell you this. If you don't have a lot of web traffic, that's okay. Because in the world of niche magazines, and I can see the list of people that are here today, all of you are, are very niche. In the world of niche, you don't necessarily have to have big traffic in order to make good money from your website. So we have to change our thought process a little bit. I'm not going to take time uh, you know, on this particular slide here today, but it's important for you to understand as you want to step up your game, uh, you know, you really have to get the right equipment. And it's just like playing golf. I mean, could you play a round of golf with a putter? Uh, you know, Bobby Jones did that one time and did, did very well, but we're not all Bobby Jones. What we need to do is make sure that we're stop tracking hits on our website, and we need to start talking about real numbers. You need to know the numbers to fully know how you can make money on a website. I'm going to show you a little Google Analytics report here in, in just one second. But what I say, and I'm, of course I'm joking when I say this, is that when people talk about HITS, I like to make the joke that HITS stands for How Idiots Track Success. Now, if you do use the word HITS uh, in a given sentence, uh, you know, please don't be offended by that. It's just kind of a funny thing. I'm a funny guy. <laughs> but let's talk about traffic a little bit because if you don't know your traffic, if you do know your traffic and you just can't understand it, we're going to talk a little bit more in detail about it why you don't want to use hits. There's a couple of reasons. First of all, when you're a 23-year-old media buyer from Minneapolis and you start talking about hits, they really know that you have no clue as to what it is you're talking about in your website. What we have on the screen right now is an example of House and Home Magazine out of Philadelphia. As you'll notice, that this is one giant, one web page was served up. This is one web page, okay? And that's a hit. This low, when it's served up, it counts as a hit. This greater counts as a hit. This one, and this one, and this one, and this one this counts as a hit. All of these things that load on this page are counted as a hit. So on this one page, one page impression that was served, there's 45 hits. So we look at your web statistics that your table may give you notice that Google doesn't give you is hits. And the reason they don't give you hits in most cases, because hits is, isn't a relevant number when it comes to total website pages served. What we do today is we want to get down to the nitty gritty. We want to find out how many actual pages were served. So when I say a page, I'm talking about everything on this page. One page impression. Back up for a second. You've got one person sitting at one computer looking at one page. Now, it doesn't matter that there's 45 things on this page. What it matters is at one page. And on that page, there was an ad at the top. There was an ad at the bottom. There was some ad to the sides. That's what we want to know. We don't want to know how many elements were served, how many hits were served. We want to know how many individual pages were served. Now, you're sitting there saying, okay, Ryan, this is really basic. I know this. Let's get on to, some, to the meaty issues. Here's the thing to remember is that if you know these things, this is just reinforcing what you know, we're going to get into some great, great detail that's probably going to blow your mind as this presentation continues. Okay? So let's get away from talking about hits. We want to talk about individual number of pages that are served. Okay? And those are called page impressions. Okay? Every time you display a page on your website, it equals one 
page impression. Now let's just say you have four ads on that page. That's going to be four ad impressions, four ads on a page. For example, if last month you served up 21,000 page impressions and ads on every page, that served up 84,000 total ads. That's a huge number. It's a big number. Now, a lot of folks might look at that. You, I served up you know, 21,000 pages last month. That's not very big. Well, you know, in the term, uh, you know, in, in the world of the World Wide Web, sure, 21,000 pages is not very big. But when you are able to put four ads on every page, all of a sudden you're serving 84,000 ads. You're in the world of niche. That's a pretty decent number. It's a number that's not terribly hard to sell. So we have to use what we have in front of us uh, to our advantage. So let, let's take a look at this Google report, okay? Now, at the top, now if you don't get Google Analytics, let me explain something about a little bit about Google Analytics to you. Google is very conservative, very conservative. So when you use Google Analytical numbers uh, and are talking about these to your potential advertisers and to your partners, you can be sure that the Google numbers are, are correct <laughs> because they're always typically very conservative. As a matter of fact, they can be sometimes as much as 35% lower than what really is happening on your website. You might say, well, wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. Why is that? Well, the reason is, is pretty simple. Google is, is going to strip out anything that it can to be a robot, a engine, traffic, anything that it considers to be out of the ordinary, it's going to throw out. So let me give you an example. I have a publisher that I work with in Louisiana. They actually get a lot of traffic to their website from overseas customers. Some of these folks happen to be from China. They're going to be traveling to the state of Louisiana. Well, we found that, wow, this web traffic is, from Google is really low, and we went and looked a little bit more deeply and realized, oh, I see what's happening. They were throwing out a lot of the traffic from China because the person accessing it was accessing it through uh, you know, an Internet service provider there that Google didn't like. So rest assured, if you use your Google numbers, they're more than likely going to be accurate. Now, if you want to get something that's more accurate, you know, perhaps – you might want to look at Urchin. You might want to look um, you know, at some of the other ad statistical programs. But be assured that when you're looking at your Google Analytics reports, typically you know, they're going to be conservative, but they'll be right. Okay? Now, what we're looking for is this first number, visits. The number there is the total number of visits, people that came to your website. So on this particular magazine website, there were 58,000 visits in the last month, 58,000 visitors, okay? Those people look at a total of 274,000 pages, okay? So I've got my calculator here. That means they looked at 274,000 individual pages. doesn't matter if it was the main page. doesn't matter if it was an article page, a search page. They looked at 274,000 pages. So let me take my calculator. 274,000, and I know a particular customer has four ads on every page times four. Okay, that's one point, it's almost 1.1 million ads that they were able to serve So in a month. Now, so the first thing you have to, to recognize, and we're going to look at this in a second, is my page, on my website, have enough ads so that the, the website is able to generate enough ad impressions to make our advertisers happy without junking up the page. See, here's the thing. I'm a very big proponent of nice-looking websites. I like websites that have all kinds of these blinky ads and ads that flash and spin and twirl. Because to be honest together, as active professionals, when you do a website like the, the ones that, re that represent the magazines that I see here today that are on this call, you want to portray a nice, classy, top-notch, top-tier image so that the ad units that we display are correct size, that they look nice, that they fit into your template. I'm going to talk more in detail about that in just a second. But first we have to determine how much traffic do we have, and then we're going to talk about how do we price it and how do we sell it. Okay? All right, 58,000 visitors that came to the website. They looked at 274,000 pages, which is like 1.1 million ads were served. Each visitor looked at approximately 4 to 5, 4.68 pages per visit. That's actually pretty high. Uh, national average, 1.5, 2 on main websites, pretty common, four to five pages, you know, per visitor. So one of the things, and I don't want to get off on this tangent too far, is if you're looking at your Google Analytics, 
looking at one page, there's a couple things you might want to consider. Either A, they found exactly what they're looking for, and that's great. Or they didn't find what they're looking for, and they bounced right back off your website. And that's why you want to look over here at your bounce rate at the top. This is all part of the, what's the story you're going to tell to an advertiser, okay? So stay with me. They have about 45%. That means about you know, a little bit less than half of their traffic is bouncing, meaning they're coming to one page and bouncing off. It's not very good. Now, if your rate is, say, 25% to 30%, I mean, I think that that's acceptable. Um, you want to try to be below 30%. And that's a conversation. You want to work with a web um, professional or web team, uh, you know, like like us here, to determine if your bounce rate is over 50%, you've got some problems. And we can we can solve those, but it'll take some time. Okay. Here's something kind of cool. This is why I think that people are finding what they're looking for. The average time spent on the site is five minutes. I mean, the national average is about a minute and a half on most websites. Now, one thing to remember is we talk about national averages. Be honest here together. We're not national in most cases. Most of these magazines that we're dealing with are, you know, uh, mag web magazines that are niche. They target a niche audience. So I give you national averages just because I want to make sure that you kind of see where we are in terms of the national scope. A website, you know, four to six minutes is is pretty common. Now, next number here: 44% new visitors. That's mildly alarming to me. Typically, you're not going to have almost half of your traffic be brand new. Okay, so what I would be doing is I would be watching these statistics over the course of two or three months to see, okay, where where are we at? All right. Now, what I'm able to do from this is I'm able to tell an advertiser and a, a story, and this is really important for everybody to understand. This is the story I can tell from these statistics. This is I'm going to be talking to an advertiser, Mr. Advertiser. Each month, 50,000 people come to our website and look at. No, just over 200,000 to 250,000 pages. On those page four ads, so we're able to serve up over a million ads per month. These people coming to our website are looking at over, you know, four to five pages on each and every on each and every visit, and they spend as much as six minutes on our website, which is almost twice the national average. Interestingly enough, nearly half of our web traffic each month is brand new people. One of the reasons this is so important is because. As a salesperson, as a general manager, as a publisher, you always, when it comes to the internet, you always want to be working on refining the story that you're telling. Now, when I say I'm not talking about a lie, <laughs> okay? A lot of times, you know, we're dealing with salespeople, and it's like one big, you know, giant exaggeration, okay? When it comes to the internet, you have to be very careful because there's a lot of sources to be able to track your traffic. So you want to make sure that you paint a real and a, a, real, a realistic picture, okay? So what I encourage you to do is your first piece of homework is that you, that you really get down to the nitty-gritty on your Google Analytics. I can spend hours on this one sheet, and we, I can tell a lot about your website, and I don't have to go to the website just from looking at this statistical report. Now, why do you need to know all of these numbers? Why are they so important? Well, you're going to measure total revenue potential for your website. You really know where to start, okay? So let's talk about pricing. It's really important for you to understand at this point I'm talking in, in broad uh, generalities because obviously each one of your magazines is, is uniquely different. Some of you, you know, be in the oil and gas business, so your ad rates are going to be a lot higher. When I'm asked, the most common question I'm asked is, how do you place banner ads on your website, advertising? So this is the, this is the best example that I've run through, gosh, I don't know, I've run through a lot of times. and Almost always it, it works out, okay? If your total unique visitor count is less than your total, hopefully you, you, hopefully you all know your total circulation, okay? If the total visitors to your website is less than your circulation, then your lowest, cheapest price ad on your website should be about 25% of your four color full page rate. An example, okay? So circulation, let's just say your circulation is 25,000. Okay, unique visitors to your website is roughly thirteen thousand a month. Okay, and let's just say, for sake of example, your four color full page twelve time rates. Okay, is twelve dollars. That means that you should be pricing your cheapest banner ad around three hundred dollars. Okay, let me back up one slide so that you can look at that note that notation again. So in general, if your unique visitors, your total, vi your unique visitors to your website 
is less than your circulation, then charging about 25% of your page for color 12 time rate for your banner ads. I'm going to guess that the majority of you are way underselling your banner ads. This is all part of the concept of generating solid revenue. First things first, you've got to stop giving this stuff away. Okay? Now, who's going to be affected by that? Your new users coming on board are not going to know that you used to give it away, so you've got to stop doing that. And we're going to talk a little bit about packaging today, but that's a whole other conversation. Okay? Now, let's, let's talk a little bit about if your uh, unique visitors to your website is actually higher. If your unique visitors is actually greater than your total circulation, then that on your website needs to be approximately 95% or equal to your four-color full-page rate. I'll give you an example. So let's say circulation is roughly 55,000. Okay, and this may be for some of you. This may be this scenario. Okay, if unique user count is 90,000 coming to your website, if your full page rate, let's just say as an example, obviously is $1,200, then you'd be charging around 1,000 bucks for your banner ads on your website. Now, people, wait a minute, how in the world could I charge as much for a banner ad as I can for a full page ad in my magazine? Well, here's the reason. You have more people reading your website than are reading your magazine. And so in cases that this happens, it's very important for you to understand that in those situations, your web rates need to be almost as expensive, if not equal, to your magazine. That's that most of you are thinking, oh my gosh, I mean, you're out of your mind. There's no possible way that I charge that much for a banner ad. Well, I'll tell you today that it may not work for old advertisers. It will work much better for new advertisers as you're talking to new prospects. But likely, you are underselling the total value of your website. If you truly have more people coming to your website than are reading your magazine, you may need to adjust your rates uh, accordingly. Okay? Again, these are broad you know, representation examples, but the goal of this is to get you thinking. Run that scenario, if you would, when uh, we're done with this call, or you know, just kind of figure out, okay, where am I at? So one more time, let me back up so that we can make sure that everybody's on the same page because going forward, this conversation is going to be very, very important. If the visit website is less than your circulation, okay, you're charging roughly 25% of your for color full page rate. Okay? If your unique visitors to your website is greater than your circulation, it's highly likely you should be charging pretty close to your charging for a full page in your magazine to advertise on the website all of you to run this scenario. I have run it no more than 100 times, probably more than 100, because I've taught just over 3,000 people at these various seminars across the country. We've run this scenario many times, whether it's oil and gas, whether it's, whether it's the equine market, you know, whether it's the pet market. You know, uh, we run it a lot, and it seems to always you know, work out. Okay? All right. Now, talking about these banner ads, I've been to some of your websites, and overall they're pretty, pretty nice. Here's something we need to consider. We really need to thoughtfully think these things through. You are, and you may have to make changes to your website to accommodate this particular uh, tip. You make sure you give advertisers a reason to advertise. They need to feel like they are a part of the website. I'm going to show you some examples here in a minute. At that end, you need to make sure that you're using interactive advertising bureau standard sizes. A lot of people you know, understand why is that important. It's, it's important because you want to be sure that you are playing at the same level as every other major website in the country. Interactive, the Active Advertising Bureau, the website is iab.net. You do not have to be a subscriber. You really want to pay attention to their sizing and how the sizing changes. I'll show you an example here in a minute. All too often, niche publishers, uh, like many of you, uh, publishers in general, <laughs> tend to be a year and a half to two years behind. I'm going to show you some examples in a second. The other thing is, unique sizes are just out. I mean, if you're dealing with an agency, they don't want to deal with your unique size. They, want to, they, they have created a 720 by 90, 300, 300 by 250, etc. They're ready to go. What do I need to create a 50 by 50 for you, Bob? Well, that's the size that my art director wants me to run. Listen, I'm a big fan of art directors. Big, big fan of art directors. Most art directors these days know about the IAB and Interactive Advertising Bureau standard sizes. This is not going to surprise them. 
The other thing is you need to keep it simple for your advertisers. Okay? Get an example. You'll notice at the top, our website at the top, right here, is a 728 by 90 leaderboard ad. Okay? Now, over to the right, this is called a skyscraper. It's 150 by 600. Now, are both interactive advertising bureau standard sizes? Yes. This here is one of the most popular sizes. 790 is still very, very popular. This is not. Now, more websites than not are dropping the 160 by 600 skyscraper. There's a couple reasons for it. One, it's just not popular anymore. Two, it's high and four. Three, the advertising message is often below the fold on the page. If you're a website that runs skyscrapers, I would very much encourage you to think about changing the sizing on your website. You want to make sure that you're current. You want to make sure that you give your advertisers new and exciting things to think about. So your total revenue potential, you may have to change your ad sizes. Here's this website, Country Roads Magazine. This right here, this is a 728 by 90. It's a sized ad, it works well, and it makes a, you know, it, it makes a ton of it makes a ton of sense. Okay? Now, what you're gonna want to do is you want to make sure that you know you also look over here to the right. You'll notice on this particular website that they've then got a 300 by 300 ad that's here, another one that's here. Now, it depends upon your website how many of these ads that you want to run at any given time. But I would tell you that you can usually get away with running two ads over in this particular area in the right rail. And you want to do a 28 by 90 up here at the top, and then you want to do one at the bottom of your page. Now, you may say, you know, Ryan, why would I want to do a bad the bottom of the page. Nobody clicks at the bottom of the website. Oh, contraire. Yes, they do. It is uh, about 3 to 6% of your click will occur at the bottom of your website. So what I do is I charge them for this one up here. I bonus them the one you know, at, the, you know, at, at the bottom. Okay. Now, you'll also notice at the top that I've got a promo space right here. This is like a 160 by 90 promo space. I think it's really important for all of you to dedicate a certain part of your landscape to promotion and publicity. It's really important for you to, you know, make take some time to make sure that you've got some really good uh, spaces on your website to promote your contests, your promotions, newsletters, etc. Okay. An example of 728 by 90 here, and you got 300 by 300 uh, to the right. All these are interactive advertising bureau standard sizes. Okay. Website. They obviously have a 728 by 90, you know, here at the top. And it's called, no matter what website you're on, it's, it's a leaderboard. And this looks to me to be, uh, looks about a 250 by 300 ad. And that's still an IAB standard size. 300 ads are, are really popular because it's easy to design for, for this box, for this size. It's very easy to design. It's also easy to incorporate, you know, into uh, most, uh, you know, websites' designs. Now, on this particular site, if you scroll down, uh, one of the things you would see is you would see you know, Google ads and, and some third-party ads being served. One of the questions that um, has been posed uh, you know, by one of you that's here on the presentation today is, what are, your, what are my thoughts on using Google ads or third-party ad networks? The, the reason I don't encourage Google ads and third-party networks personally, this is one guy's opinion on niche websites, is because you typically can sell your ads for more money more money than Google AdWords and these ad networks are going to be able to pay. If your web traffic is less than 100,000, there's really not a real great reason to use Google, ad, uh, Google Ads or Google Text Ads um, or third-party ads because you typically will not make as much money as you can sell these advertisements for. Now, each of you may be unique. market may be unique. Your traffic may be unique. I, from the, uh, av the publishers that I've worked with, very few of them have made any money using the Google Ad Network, okay? Let's look at another, let's, uh, let's see, do we have one more? Okay, so that's on sizing. Now, make sure any questions you have in that lower right-hand corner, and I'll make sure I pause to answer them. The thing we have to make sure that we're real careful about when we're trying to grow online revenue is we want to make sure that we have really good, solid ad delivery systems, okay? Advertisers are really going to demand accurate reports. So whether you use Ad Juggler, or you use Bad Man, or you use DoubleClick, or you use Google's ad delivery system, you need to make 
really solid, trackable, great way to be able to serve up advertising for your advertisers. It is mission critical uh, to your newspaper, to your magazine, that you have very accurate reports. You want point number two, you want to watch these reports. Why is this important to identifying revenue on your website? If your advertiser is running an ad with you and they're performing poorly, week one performing poorly, it's probably going to be performing poorly in week two. So as a sales representative or as the sales manager, you want to watch these campaigns and you want to be able to say, Mr. Advertiser, the creative that you supplied to us is not being clicked on. Um, it told me that you needed about 50 clicks this month to make this worthwhile to you. I will tell you as sure as the sun will set today uh, on my office before I go home <laughs> that it is highly likely that most of you do not act, watch on a weekly basis your best reports. In the what happens? The cycle comes up or the end of the campaign comes up. You'll call the advertiser and say, hey, all right, you ready to renew? Well, I looked at my ad report. I only had two clicks. No. You did all along that campaign cycle to watch the ad report for that advertiser and make suggestions. So that advertisers often you know, will submit bad creative. Well, you write up in the beginning. Hey, listen, the ad that you sent, I appreciate you sending it. Thanks so much. We appreciate it. Based on my experience and what I've seen, I don't think it's going to get a lot of clicks. And remember, Mr. Advertiser, you told me that you needed like 50 clicks in order to be happy. I'm not thinking that ad's going to generate 50 clicks. But what we're going to do, let's watch it this week. See how it is. You watch it like a hawk. See, there's getting no clicks. You need to call them back and say, Mr. Advertiser, okay, like I said, this is not getting any clicks. We need to make a change. Would it be okay if my director or my ad team designed an ad for you, ran it in tandem with your ad? Let's see if we can get some more, more clicks. Advertiser, it needs a better call to action. Any better color. Our website is blue. Your ad is blue. You need to make it yellow. Something. I to know that if you have a good ad delivery system, your revenue potential will skyrocket because you can use these reports to be user um, centric You can be more OI-centric. If you are OI-centric, you will grow your revenue literally, literally month to month because advertisers will realize that you're actually watching out for them as a major national magazines every month. Major national top 500 consumer mags. Now, the only time that I get a phone call is at renewal. That is the only time that I get a phone call. Suggestion to the sales, hey, why don't you call me um, you know, during the month, middle of the month, let me know how my banner ad is doing. Never, ever have I had a phone call from any one of these magazines. But I'll tell you what, when, that, when the first of the month comes and it's time for me to renew, guess who I get a call from? You know, Bob and Rick and, and you know, Janice, they're all calling saying, hey, are you ready to renew your ad? How did it do for you? What do you mean, how did it do for me? You don't know how my ad did? I'm going to call today if you don't get anything else out of this call today. If you create OI-centric mechanisms within your organization using your delivery systems and software, you get some contact with your advertisers throughout the month. You say, well, I'm too busy to do that. I'm here to tell you that you can't be too busy not to look at those reports once a week, call up your advertisers if something good or bad is happening. Hey, Bob, you've got 95 clicks. Or let's just say Bob told you that I only need my banner ad to be displayed 1,000 times. You call them and say, listen, we're at 500. We're working our way to 1,000. This is really working out great for you. All right? So that static ads limit potential big time. A lot of times what you'll do is you'll sell static ads on your web page. Why? Because it's easy. Do not uh, yield as much potential revenue as when you run an equal rotation. Real quickly about how many ads can you run. Okay, It's a very common question. How many ads can I run? The first thing to do is you have to look at those numbers we talked about in the, be in the beginning of this call. You have to look at those numbers. And you say, okay, how many ad impressions do I have to offer? You can't determine. You can't just say willy-nilly, well, we're going to run 10 ads. We're going to run advertisers on the website. Okay, how many ads can I deliver? You have to determine, and only you can do this. You have to determine how, determine how many ad impressions, how many times does this ad need to be displayed to keep my advertiser happy. I, I can't tell you that. It might be 500 
in your niche. I mean, dealing with high-end uh, you know, CEOs of major companies. You may not um, have to deliver 5,000 ad impressions. You might only need to deliver 100 quality ad impressions. Okay? How many times does an ad have to be displayed? Here's what you can't do. You can't think to yourself, thousands. It's got to be thousands or, or, or no one's. It's, it's got to be thousands. It doesn't have to be thousands. It depends upon your niche. So let's just say that you have 50,000 potential available ad impressions, okay? And you do each advertiser needs to be happy. Well, then that means that you run five advertisers in equal rotation through all the spots on your website. And it's, it really is as simple as that. Get from your advertisers how many ads need to be run in any given month you know, in order to be exceedingly, exceedingly happy. Okay. Newsletters for a second. If you have questions about banner ads, don't wait to the end. Go ahead and put them in the little box down here, and we'll talk more about it. Let's talk about e-newsletters as we're talking about total revenue potential for your website. Newsletters, the keys for your advertisers are over frequency. We all know that it takes seven times for a potential customer to react to an advertisement. Okay. Let's just say that you don't believe that. Let's just say you think it's only five times. Okay, uh, That's fine. We need to be the, the, the company. We need to be the magazine. We need to be the newspaper. We need to be the website giving that advertiser all five opportunities. Banner ad. Second time might be an e-newsletter. Third time might be another type of an e-newsletter. Video. Maybe it's a Twitter, uh, a Twitter post. Okay, we need to be the person that's increasing that frequency for your advertisers. E-newsletters are cheap. Now, don't tune me out. If you think you have an e-newsletter, you probably either a are not doing it correctly, or b are not selling it well enough. Okay, even if you're sold out this month, pay attention. I've got more money for you to be made. Percent of your online revenue is going to come from e-newsletters over the course of the next three to four years. E-newsletters are easy to sell. You can use existing lists to blow up those sales. And the thing about it is advertisers get e-newsletters. They just they, they get it. It makes sense to them. Okay? So one of the first things you need to consider in growing your revenue regarding e-newsletters is that you need to create a marketing and promotional calendar. It needs to be important as your editorial calendar. What are we going to do each month to entice people to give us their email address? You know, I have a little box you know, on my website. I have a little box that says – from a newsletter, that is not good enough. If you want a list from 5,000 to 50,000, you need to figure out a prize, a contest, a gimmick, if you will, work with an advertiser to create really compelling contests. If you don't do anything else over the course of the next three months, you need to figure out how to grow your e-newsletter list. Email addresses are essential to your success online. 35% of your revenue or more will come from it. Okay? You need to create each month. You need to use a tier collection system, you know, uh, like StreamSend or Contact. If you're using Contact, it's not working for you, switch. If you're using Chimp Mail and it's not working for you, switch. Switch to some StreamSend or iContact. These guys are easy to work with, cheap, easy to work with. When you make a no-spam promise, and then you deliver on that promise. Do not spam these people. You want to send them only relevant topical information. We're going to talk about that in a second. What does double opt-in do you need it? Double opt-in means that a on your email list has made two actions. To up. Basically, it makes it double as good. You get up on the website, and then you send them a confirmation email. Do, do you need that? No, you don't. Is it absolutely? Is it essential? No. Um, should you try to have double opt-in? Yes, you should try. It makes your list more valuable. Do you have to have double opt-in? No, you don't. No, you don't. What's the newsletter? Now, you've got, a, you've got a place where your contest you know, is at, and you've got the contest input. Now, I want to take that one name, and I'm going to break put them onto a research list. That's a list that only we're going to send research information to. I'll also put them on our editorial list. And that's where we're going to send out our editorial newsletter. See, most of you think of uh, newsletters uh, that you send out each month. That's your editorial newsletter. That's not what I'm talking about. Do what you want with your editorial newsletter. I mean, it's important. Write ads on it if you can. But your editorial newsletter is not where most of your money is going to be made. Your, your money is made on emails that are very, very specific to your niche. I often uh, you know, like to go, and I like to place that name on my circulation list. What 
speculation list. I protect it. Now, do I have permission to add these people to all of these you know, different lists? When you're talking about something like circulation where you're not going to spam them, but honestly, you know, you don't necessarily need their permission because you've already engaged in a business relationship with them on the contest input point of entry. So this circulation is, list is, is important. This is what you're going to use to really – this you're not going to send any advertisements to this list. I mean, this is a very, very protected list. And it's probably what they signed up for. Research is something that most of them like to participate in, as long as you don't spam them. This is the – you want to give them some options, okay? This is where your money is going to come from. This right here, folks, this is all about the money down here. So this is your revenue potential and growing it. What else do I, we already talked about editorial. Based upon your niche, we have proven over the course of the last, oh, I guess, probably six years that you can send somebody three separate e emails, and they will be angry with you and not unsubscribe as long as – listen carefully – as long as those e are topical, they are and they are 100% relevant, which is you don't want to send them a standalone email push from Harley Davidson if your website is all about soccer moms. Okay, let's be honest here. You want to make sure what you're sending them is completely relevant. Now, here's the best way. When someone signs up for your contest, it's great if you could say, listen, we have an editorial uh, newsletter, we have a services update, a new products newsletter, and a what's new newsletter. Which one of these would you like? And then they can check, I want this one, I want this one, I want this one, and I want this one. This is what you have. This is what you're working with, editorial. That's it. You're limited big time. Now let's talk about you might be a B2B business. I see some of you are B2B and some of you are B2C on the call today. This is B2B because there's so many – Different areas. If you're in the uh, you know audio business, you know for example, there's so many product services, new product debuts, releases, etc. That it's really easy to do. In the B to C space, it's it's equally as easy. You just got to pay attention and make some smart decisions. So you want to come up with a goal of three. It's really important. Remember, everything in life happens in terms of three. In the three D world, right? There's three legs on a stool. If you want the stool to work, you know. If you're just, there's many things that happen in terms of three, okay? Why e newsletters be any different, right? My goal to you and charge to you is to figure out, with, with beyond editorial, three newsletters that you can put together each month, specific, service products, new industry news, etc., things like that. Now, you might have time to write three of these. You don't have to. These three e newsletters are typically always filled with advertiser driven. Uh, information, and we're going to show you an example here in just a second. So you have to spend a lot of time creating it. So here's where the money comes in. First, determine how many email addresses do you have, and, and this is what I want you to think. Okay, I only have 1,500. It's not going to work. It's, it's not going to work for me. It does. It depends on how niche your niche is. At the low, you're going to be charging about $25 a thousand for names on the low end. Okay. Say you're dealing with CEOs, lawyers, doctors, um, high net worth individuals. On the high end, a lot of those lists are selling for $250 a thousand. Okay, this is advertiser. Okay, you just need to really test the waters. That's what's really important. Advertisers are going to tell you what that list is worth. All right, let's take a look at some examples. All right, now I'll come back to that other slide in a second. This is an example of something from Ad Age Digital. Okay, so they've got their ad units that are structured here to the right. I like that. Here's the editorial that's very, very simple, you know, along the left with images and pictures. It's really important to note one thing in the text of the ad, okay? They're giving people too much information. They're giving them just enough information to, to test their appetite, to get them to come over to the website. It's a fatal flaw, a fatal flaw that I see all the time, all of the time. In e-newsletters, the newsletters are thorough, and they're complete. Why in the world would someone need to visit your website? Why would someone need to visit the advertiser's website? They don't. I'm telling you to quit being so thorough. <laughs> you need to give them enough information that they can't make a decision not to click. Okay? You want to give them enough information that they click over to your website. Okay? So if you're selling this newsletter for, say, $100, a 1000 and you have you know, uh, 2,000 names, okay? that means each advertiser to be included 
is going to be paying roughly, you know, 200 bucks, okay, to be involved in that in this e-newsletter. Okay? So that means you've got one ad here and you've got another ad here. So this e-newsletter right here would sell for about $400. If you're dollars a thousand and you had a couple of thousand names. Okay? This is one way to structure it. Here's a different type of, of newsletter. A particular one has got a much larger ad unit, okay? And that ad unit then uh, can be priced accordingly. All right, so you might say, well, this takes up the space of two ad units, so I'm going to charge them, say, you know, twice as much. Now, notice here, though, all of this text, okay? This is not a good way to do a newsletter unless the intent of your newsletter is to be thorough and complete. If that's it, I would challenge you to think slightly differently because there's two, two things about a newsletter that you can use to your advantage. One is to get people to come back to your website or to the advertiser's website, okay? thing is that you know you can use it uh, to be able to, to sell from. So I encourage you not to have a tremendous amount of text. This might be if you've got – if this uh, ad right here is taking up two ad spots, then charge them two times the money for it. Great uh, newsletter from the Family Motor Coach Association, a really excellent client of mine, 100-some thousand, 120-some thousand members. they got like maybe 80,000 people in their e-newsletter list. They have three spots here you know, f that are sold out each and every months, okay, and they pay way in advance, okay, and they don't have 80,000 email addresses, I, you probably don't, that's okay, did they in the beginning, okay, this is not members, okay, this is people that have signed up, they've given them a lot of opportunities to be able to buy into, you know, the overall, you know, plan, so what's really important for you to understand in evaluating the total revenue potential of your website is, okay, I've got my editorial e newsletter, now, what am I going to do to be able to create three more, two more? Okay. Now, you'll notice that what you're going to do is you're going to get a picture from the advertiser. You're going to get some text from the advertiser. So your editorial team is basically kind of out when it comes to creating these e-newsletters that are sales-driven. Now, if you think to yourself, now, why in the world would I want to get um, a newsletter full of a advertisers? I mean, that just sounds like spam. Here's the thing to remember. Dealing with the world of niche, you're dealing with people that get excited about new products, new services, product debuts. Uh, maybe maybe some of you might be into cycling. Okay, um, I have to be into boating. I, I like getting newsletters. I know what they're doing. Um, selling it to these advertisers. I like finding out what's what are new products that are out there. Um, put it in your magazine. Make it a part of the total ad package. I mean, you can break out three. It, every publisher that has done this, that has broken out three e-newsletters. Starts out selling a couple spaces a month, ends up selling out all three, you know, over the course of three to six months. It gives the ad sales team something else to sell. It gives advertisers something to, you know, to get excited about and to be a part of. Okay. Coming back, I want to share with you something else that's that's really really a, a great kind of side note and add-on. Press releases you get each month for new products into your office to your editorial team. Well, I mean, you just don't have enough time to be able or, or space to be able to put these uh, press releases and product information in your magazine. Maybe you don't even have time to put them on your website. One of the single greatest revenue-generating things that happens at many of the magazines that I work with is they turn these press releases into cash. They have a new product release newsletter, a newsletter that goes out once a month. It has 10 slots. Many of them, listen carefully, Many of them have one salesperson dedicated to calling back all of these press release people. What they say to them, hey, they say, listen, uh, we got your press release. Um, you've missed deadline, so the magazine's gone already. But a new product, a new release, new services, newsletter that goes out at the end of the month. If you'd like to have your information included in that, it's $200. Okay? Now, depending on your industry, you do the math on that. If you've got nine spaces, that's $18. Okay, and say so you get 15 or 20 of these a month. All right? That's $21,000 a month, $21,000 a year. Okay? Depending upon your niche, it, it depends on how much you can charge for this. We call it turning press releases into cash. And you might say, I just don't know if this will work. You need to try. Don't become guilty of analysis by analysis. A lot of times you spend so much time analyzing that you don't spend any time doing things. The beauty about the Internet is that you can do it. If it doesn't work, don't do it anymore. It's not like you're launching a new section of the magazine where you've got to you know, buy more pages and you've got to sell more pages. If it doesn't work on the Internet, then stop doing it and do something else. One of the worst things you can do is start doing something new online 
If it's not working, just keep doing it. Well, that's just dumb. If it's not working, turn it off. There's things about the Internet. Let's see research. Research most magazines and newspapers do not do for their advertisers. Really simple. Find out if the industry offers this. Uh, you're able to say to an advertiser as a part of your package, uh, in the fall this year we will send out your survey uh, to 1,000 of our readers. Um, and we will send that out uh, via, via email and ask them to come take the survey. And back, uh, and these readers are really, um, really open to helping and taking surveys. For whatever reason, people like to take surveys as long as there are 10 to 15 questions. Anything more than 15 questions, you're out. If you're asking people to buy research from you, that's different. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about over the course of 12 months, an advertiser is going to say to you, you're going to say to them, I'm going to offer you 12 pages in the, mag in the magazine or you know, a weekly insertion in the newspaper. Have it on the website. You're going to be in our new products release uh, newsletter each month. Oh, I'm going to send out a survey that you give me the questions for. We both have the data. I'm going to do some research for you. All of a sudden, you've taken your total value proposition to your advertiser, and you've increased your total value proposition. Here's the thing to remember. When things get tough, and they're getting better right now. I mean, I'm seeing a lot of green shoots. I'm not hearing my sales managers at the various magazines talk such doom and gloom. They're actually having good luck. But the reason that, that I think my folks have such good luck is – because their total value proposition is larger than the competition. What is competition doing? They're selling a, a, a here and there. They're selling a full page. They're not creating good packages. The total value proposition and creativity to the advertiser stinks. Okay? I will tell you, more times than not, I have seen people win an advertising buy because they've just been more creative. Okay? Research, not selling research, but the ability to do research for an advertiser. Business degrees are a great way, even if you're in a B2C market. Uh, in the B2B market, they're really, really good. Directories um, are simple, they're straightforward, and they can be incorporated into your website in a matter of, of, of days. You can think this thing to death, or you can just launch a business directory. The reason business, business directories are great is because you can incorporate into your overall ad package. Um, and charge them, say, $25 a month, which is nothing to them. It's a no-brainer, okay? And you're able to increase your total value proposition by offering business directories uh, to your advertisers. It doesn't matter if your competitors already do it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't it matter to your advertiser, okay? Offering it as a part of your total package, okay? You want to make it a part of the buy. If you're going to think you're going to hire somebody to sell the business directory, you're probably not going to make much money. What I'm going to tell you is that business directory you know, overall, great revenue generator. I mean, do the math on it. 25 advertisers in your directory paying $25 a month, that's $2,000 a year. Well, math again, let's just say that you, you know, set your goal that you want to have 100 in there. And let's say that you're only doing $15, $15 a month. I mean, that's $18,000 a year. I mean, it blows my mind when I talk to customers and clients and say, hey, do you have a business directory? Nah, no, we don't want to do it. Our competition is doing that. Or here's a good one. Uh, no, you know, we don't want to do business directories, you know, because, I mean, people have the yellow pages. Okay, the agents are calling. They want you back. I mean, let's be honest. How many times have you picked up the yellow pages in the last uh, two years? Okay. I can tell you of five times I've gone to the yellow pages. People use the Internet. I'm not saying the yellow pages are dead. I'm just saying that you know, overall, the uh, day and age we live in, people are using the internet mount now more than ever for research. Okay, so business directories is a great, great way, great way to increase your overall revenue potential of your website. It's simple, it's easy to incorporate. There's a bunch of software out there to be able to do business directories. It's easy to sell. The biggest thing is you have to incorporate it into your overall ad package. You have to make it a part. Of your over of your overall ad buy. If you don't, then you're going to be losing out. Okay. Now, the thing that I want to stress a point about, and if you have questions, make sure you ask them. Because we're yeah, and Ryan, I actually have it. Just so I'm gonna let you finish, but um, I have that I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and ask for you. Okay. Okay. Um, go ahead. Yeah, because we'll, we'll wrap up here in just like 30 seconds, and then we'll get to get to questions. So that's cool. Um, it's really important for all of you to understand that you have to increase your total you proposition to your advertiser. When you're with your sales team, you've got to have a robust package. You will not succeed 
uh, in the world that we live in today unless you offer multimedia ad packages. You may be doing fine right now, and if you are, congratulations, kudos to you. But if, God, if you want to win, you've got to stop this a la carte, I sell everything separately type scenario. You've got to get everything together under one umbrella, offer a total, com complete, value proposition driven, huge ad package to these advertisers. And if they say, well, I only want print, then you've got to explain to them, listen, print is great, but it's not enough. You've got to increase people and overstimulate them now more than ever. It's very, very, very important. So as we wrap up today, the, the, the key note, if you will, in this whole uh, presentation is that you've really got to get your head around your numbers. You've got to identifying all the potential revenue that some of the things we've talked about today. And then you can't be guilty of paralysis by analysis. You're going to think about this too long. And you're going to have the money that you could potentially have had. All right? Now, this is a lot to talk about in, in 55 minutes. But just, we're just scratching the surface. I mean, this is – we're just beginning to scratch the surface. So, Dave, I'm anxious to, uh, to answer some questions as we, as we roll towards the top of the hour. Okay. Um, one question is, like, what, what percentage of difference of the different type of ads? I know you'd mentioned that you want to price it. Um, I think – I know you want it – you mentioned the – calculations you want to price your cheapest ad but like your ad versus the, the one on the bottom versus the sure. size and the different sizes between this uh, sure. each what's the difference in approximate of the of the different no, for those? well you make sure that you look at your statistics to find out which ones are getting clicked on more okay but um, one of the biggest things you want to do is you want to make sure that uh, overall that you have um, uh, about a 15 to 20 percent upcharge for the ones that are on the top that are above the fold in okay. prices so 15 okay. to 20 percent higher. Okay. How many ads should should be on the newsletter, and how many is too many? In most cases, you do not want to have typically more than more than 10 is t is almost too many. In most cases, oh, now on the standard newsletters that are <laughs> excuse me advertiser specific, you can have between six and 10. Um, editorially, you want to try to stick with three to four, and typically okay. you want them to be on the right side, or you want to space them out throughout the newsletter. And on that, a follow-up, what, what's a good open rate for e-newsletters? Um, e-newsletters, anything above 25% is doing really, really good. Here's one thing to remember, though. Because of Internet Explorer, or because of uh, Outlook and Entourage, you someone look at your e-newsletter and never actually open it. So um, allow yourself to be judged solely on your open rate okay. because it doesn't actually record an open if you just view it and preview it, even though in okay. most cases you can see the whole newsletter. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. I, I, that's how I read a lot of them. Yeah. And here that was um, that came in that was should I charge a separate fee for being in the front directory of a magazine if an advertiser already places an ad in the magazine? Um, I, I mean, in most cases, I would say yes, but you want to incorporate it into the overall advertising buy. So you want to make sure that the package is, if you're a full color, four page, four color advertiser in the magazine. You're included in the front, and if they wanted to break that out separately, you know, it would be a huge, you know, a, a huge fee. So make sure, yeah, you charge them, you know, a little bit more. But maybe that's a part of the gold package, and maybe the bronze package is you're lower. You know, you might be lower in the directory. You would charge additionally, or make it a part of the bigger package. Okay, a couple more here. Um, is it a good source to learn like the lingo? Uh, I know uh, personally our our own salespeople had some issues with that, like the pixels, and you know everyone's used to talking ads and pretty even like very experienced salespeople. I mean, for one, we had a ten year experience guy that had issues. I say issues, just a learning curve. But a good source for for that. Um, I encourage just, all of you to that? do is um is subscribe to as many uh you know newsletters of people in the industry like myself and. Um, you know, a Joe Paluzzi, uh, myself, Dan Ambrose, people like that that blog and that send out newsletters about these things. This okay. really is not a great, uh, you know, source to do at com is try to, you know, cover a lot of those issues. The other thing they can do is, is they can attend, you know, some of these things like like, um, like these camp niches and things like that, these ad sales seminars. Uh -huh. um, they will, you know, a lot of those things, um, you know, also. Okay, well, um, what like email templates? Email templates, you know, yeah, you know, there's um, eye contact and stream send have some pretty good templates. Um, okay. You kind of have to test it out. A lot of times you want to build it in Dreamweaver and test it yourself. But there's decent templates. I mean, I always, I, 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 just, I just copy people <laughs> that are, have really good ones. Um, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, they're saying here internet. About what ad delivery systems do you recommend? I mean, personally, I like Ad Juggler, um, and not just because I'm a reseller of Ad Juggler. I like Ad Juggler because I think it's very cost effective, and the reseller environment it can be about $125. Um, obviously, you know, if you're because you're our Schwecky customers, you can get that for even cheaper, even through my company, or you can go to Ad Juggler Direct. Um, I don't really like Bannerman Pro. I think that Google's got a decent ad delivery system, but um, it is kind of complicated. I really like Ad Juggler personally. I think it's a you know it's a it's a great entry level and and it can be as complex as you want it to be. Okay, we have actually have one last question unless okay. you have some on, on your that would email you directly. Um, it's a follow up to the open rate for newsletters. Uh, how do subject lines affect the open rate? Can we see some good or bad examples? Yeah, I mean I don't have any I don't have any examples to show you today, but um, it is okay. dramatic. I mean it's absolutely dramatic. Now one thing to remember is that lines um, can get you dropped into spam filters really fast. So um, if you really need some good open rates, you want to include things that include words like free and, and um, you know, things like that. Not but those company will, name, is that correct? Yeah and, yeah, and a lot of times it'll, yeah, you don't want it to be boring, and, and but you also don't want it to be stupid or silly. Um, be very careful about, um, you know, this is going to sound very, very bad, so don't anyone take offense to this. It's not meant this way in any way, shape, or form. Make sure that if you, um, you know, if your name is uh, a, a, a fellow that is a customer of nine, and his uh, name was Richard Crane. Um, you have to be very careful if you're being sent, if your name is something that could potentially be picked up by a spam filter for various reasons because of the way that your you know, shortened versions of your name. Uh, watch out for just including your company name in the subject line. You watch out for things like free, um, you know, giveaway, sweepstakes. Watch out for terms like that that will get you dropped in spam filters. But you want to make, make sure that your, your, your um, subject lines are clever. But if you really want to increase the open rate, figure out how to use the system to be able to include the person's first name. So like Ryan, comma, a great deal from uh, you know, Shweki Media, or Ryan, um, new, in, you know, inf new information, uh, Ryan form you know, from CEO Magazine or whatever it is. Okay, that's a great advice right there. Thank you. All right, um, I think that's it. Unless, do you have anything else, Ryan? No, I, I, you know, I want everybody to know this is just scratching the surface. I mean, this is barely an overview of the detail. I mean, we'd spend hours, hours on one of these points. You know, working with these publishers, you know, independently, and I'm happy to to do that. Any of them can reach out to me via breakablemedia.com and I'll contact Dave or and these guys at Schwecky, and and we'll definitely do our best to take care of you. All right. Well, thank you, Ryan. I, I personally learned a lot today, so uh, thank Good. you very much. And yeah, my uh, pleasure. We'll see you in again in uh, four weeks. Sounds great. Thanks, everybody, for right. being on the call. We appreciate it very, very much. All right. Thanks, Ryan. You bet. Take bye -bye. care.